All right, so we are just now about ready to start writing the first pieces of our thesis that will remain throughout the entire process. So some of the things that you've already written and already done uh, are just warm-up things. You can use some of that. You can reuse it in different sections. But we're going to start now the final project of that, which will be our literature review. So when we look at this, this is going to be Appendix B now of our thesis. Here are the different categories and the different sections that we're going to write. And each one of these will be their own assignment. You will write each of these sections somewhat separately. I would recommend doing it in a single document, right? And saving this often, including to either Dropbox or your Google Drive or some sort of cloud-based storage, not just to your computer. You do not want to lose anything that you are working on here. But that also helps. We'll be uploading these to Canvas, so there'll be a backup there as well. But each of these will be written separately. You will get peer feedback on each of these as well. Um, and I will have an introduction video on each of these uh, here in the next few weeks. But what you need to think about now is we are going to start reviewing all of the research associated with your general topic. And as we get closer to the specific research gap, that you're going to be investigating, specifically what you're going to do that's new and unique, we will start to get more and more narrow. But right now, what I want to do is just kind of introduce the literature review and how we can go about doing it. So the first thing when talking about the literature review that's important is we need to make sure that we are on the right road. This really is your last chance to stop what you're doing and switch topics without having to redo everything back to this point. So you definitely want to make sure that you're on the right road right? and we have a plan in place to get there. Right? Who is your team that you're going to be working with? Right? Are you working with other classmates? Are you working by yourselves? Do we have external people that we're bringing in? And who is going to be your advisor and specifically help throughout this process? Because what you do not want to be doing is getting so far down the road that then somebody finally points out that we're about to hit a big roadblock that may or may not be able to be overcome. So make sure that throughout this process, you're getting good feedback, not only from um, your peers, also your research team, if you're part of a team, including then your committee chair person, and then uh, whoever the instructor is of the course as well, making sure you're getting lots of feedback to make sure you are on the right path. We do not want to get so far down the path that we cannot um, make up the time and we have to go back um, and we don't have time for that. So the first thing that you're going to do before we even get started with the subsections, right? You've done some searching for evidence already, so you should have a good idea of what is out there. You have then done your what we already know free write. So with that, you should have gotten some good feedback on different aspects, maybe some holes that you need to consider. Um, and hopefully that's refined your, your topic. You created a concept map that has different topics as well as far as three core topics with that. And so you're getting to a point now that hopefully you can create a topic list and a topic outline. If you're still struggling with this, a last hope 
aspect is to find a good review article. And although we cannot, and it would be inappropriate to just plagiarize the review article directly, review articles do the similar sort of function as a literature review. And so maybe we can pull those topic outlines, right, the topics and the flow from that, re that review article and create your own topic outline that we will then start to fill in with start to fill in with specific articles so right now before you even get started i want you to go through and say what are the main concepts the main topics that i am going to need to include that should include the three core from your concept map and then underneath those maybe start to create some of these sub concepts and we will then organize them into sections. Once we have an idea of what we're doing and where we are going, we're going to start reading and critically reviewing the literature um, and the specific articles. This is going to be a two-step process. right? So first off, you have to select different articles. So you're going to do your searches you review them for title, abstract, and then get them. And you need to start to organize these according to those larger concepts that we have. All right? So you need to start finding articles, start getting them coming through, get as many articles as we can, abstracts, full text, all those sorts of things, and start to put them into these subcategories in the larger categories for our topic outline. After that, once we start writing each section, we're going to get into this in-depth examination where we're going to read each of these articles in complete detail. And then the best way to do this is think about making an annotated bibliography for that article, either on a separate sheet of paper or a sticky note. You can do it in EndNote, however best works you need to create a annotated bibliography sheet for that research. And this is really important because it will help us avoid some potential pitfalls in the future. So when we're reading an article, pull out the purpose, variables, participants, methods, results, conclusions, and future research and write those out separately um, so that we, we can sort the article based off of that as well as pull in that information when we need it. The other important thing as you go through and you're starting to do this, you need to create a system for storing all of your articles, right? And you probably want two versions of that, maybe a print version where you have physical copies of that. Um, I used one of those Expando binder things where each one I would have a different subsection and the articles would go in there and you just fill it up but then also have them in a folder with a PDF version with that maybe with the scanned uh, in-depth in examination piece on top just figure out a way to start controlling and keeping track of all of your uh, articles so next when we get in this this is some just generic term generic ideas once we start writing each section we need to create a separate outline for that section so i will explain what goes in each section individually the first thing after i explain what goes in there you need to create an outline for the specific components for your review of literature right? Lots and lots of subsections, right? So you need to think through, okay, how am I going to tell this version of the story, right? And so create those subsections because then it will make it a lot easier for us to find articles and organize our articles based off of what section they will go in. And then from within those subsections, the results within each one. So when we're going through and we're going to start writing, we need first the outline for that section with all of the subsections, then the articles we're going to use it, and then we will put those articles together based on their results 
which will allow us to synthesize that research. We get into this, how do I know how long is enough or how many articles you need? First and foremost, it's really helpful to create a running list of articles for a quick reference, uh, just an abbreviated version like primary author um, or list of authors and the year. And that way you can find out whether or not you've uh, read these articles before when we're searching for them as well. You can just check this quick reference list. Second question to ask yourself is, has you, have you processed all of the results of your searches? So as you're doing these searches, right, you need to be making sure that if you have 150 articles, you have at least looked at the title for all 150 articles and processed, pulled those out and looked at each of these to make sure they apply or don't apply to your overall concept. All right, so you're going to be doing lots of searches. You don't want to and you can't just find the first few articles that make um, the points that you want. You need If you search for a topic right, and you're looking for a specific article within there, right, short of just doing a huge search and getting too many, but if you pull one article from a search, you need to process all of the other articles within that search. Right. So if you do a search, you either have to go through all of the results or none. So if you get like 10,000 articles, then redo your search. You're not going to use any of them. But if you get like 250 articles and the first few are what you want, then you also need to make sure you look at the other articles as well, just to make sure there's not something more buried in there that you miss. After we've kind of looked and we've uh, kept track of this and we've processed all those results, you need to look for any holes in your outline. So if there's a part of your outline that doesn't have articles in there, then you need to go back up to the top and redo your searches and search for that area of your outline. Then the real answer to this question is how do you know if you have enough articles? It's because the articles start to become redundant, right? So anytime I find an article, right, in a search, most of the search processes then have similar articles. So you, once you go through, usually there'll be a box off to the side that says similar articles. So if I'm going, if this article matches my search, then I need to look at similar articles and see if those match my search. So that's the first place to go through to make sure you're getting this redundancy because eventually they'll be circular and all of these articles will come back to each other and that's why you keep checking this reference list. If you go through and the similar articles and all the similar articles are on your reference list already, that's a good sign. The second thing is look at the key terms for the articles that you found. So if you found articles that are helpful, you need to then go and search for articles using those same key terms. Now, again, you just have to process all of these results and see if there's anything in there. Some of the key terms may not lead to a lot of good results, but if they lead to any good results, we're going to process all of them. And then the last part is cross-referencing. For every article that you think is helpful and you use, you need to check its reference list to see if there are titles in there that might be beneficial or as your last sort of thing are a lot of those references already on your quick reference list and if they are then we're getting close to that complete saturation so errors to avoid as we're going through this process and specifically in writing we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of these within each subsection but these are just um, generic rules to keep in mind. And the first one and the most important one is to avoid what we call abstracting. And abstracting is basically taking all of those structured annotated bibliography abstracts that you've written, those one page summaries of the articles, and doing one paragraph per article telling me what a single article says. And it gets very choppy, right? Because you're basically reading a summary of one article, then a summary of the next article, then a summary of another article. 
a basic good rule is if you only have one reference in a paragraph, then we have a problem, right? We need to have multiple references per paragraph. And that go leads into our second component, which is a failure to get a consensus. When we are discussing a single topic or a single portion of our outline, we want to say what all of the research has to say about that. So we need a consensus regarding what all of the literature has to say regarding that one topic. And we want to put that at the focus of that and then discuss the differences. So the paragraph should have the topic sentence of the paragraph should have several references associated with it, making a statement, right? Whatever the topic sentence is, that's not necessarily always the first sentence because of transitions, but that should have multiple references. And then within that paragraph, we can discuss the differences. If we don't get to that good topic sentence, we're getting close to this abstracting again. The third of these major portions to uh, talk about is secondary sourcing, right? Where you read about an article in a second article, right? So like I'm reading the introduction to an article that I want to use and I read a fact that seems interesting and appropriate, right? And so I want to use that fact. There's one of two ways to go through that. Either I quote that fact, right, or not quote, but I use that fact from the article that I'm reading, which is called secondary sourcing. Or what I do is I find that reference. I then go back to that original source. I go find the full text of that source, read that full source, and then use that. And so we cannot secondary source. If you are using an idea or a fact that is quoted or referenced in one article, if that is relevant to your literature review, you need to go back and read and process that entire first article. Some of these other things are more minor in there. When we're writing at this point, do not spend a lot of time on referencing and formatting with that, right? We can come back and fix that sort of stuff to begin with. So, you know, use abbreviated references or with EndNote has that temporary reference, which is really helpful. So if you're using the site while you write with EndNote, you can insert that reference and it will change it for you. Long paragraphs, right? Direct quotes and passive voice. These are things that just get in the way. So we, you know, do not want long drawn out paragraphs. We may have multiple uh, paragraphs for one idea, one topic. That's okay, All right? There's really in this sort of writing, no need for direct quotes. So there should almost never be, and I can go as far as say, never have direct quotes with that. And then passive voice um, always comes in there as far as too many to be things. So our last little outline thing to talk about is some keys to good writing. And I got this right from the readings. Number one, outline in detail. The more detailed your outline can be, the easier it will be for you to write because you have all of these articles. If I can set up the outline first to say I want to move from this point to this point to this point and then find the articles that fit each of that outline, it will be so much easier than having this big stack of articles and somehow trying to organize them with that. So always come back to your outline. Work on one section at a time with that. And so we're, we're going to force you to do this with the way we're doing these assignments with that. So each one of these, you may have articles that go in multiple sections, that's fine, but we're going to write each section as its own sort of paper and then transition it lately. And the last good thing to think about and focus on is talk it out. Instead of trying to write, if you're having trouble explaining a portion of your outline, just verbalize it, talk to somebody about it, you know, record yourself explaining it, and then you can go back and write it. The idea that if you can explain it, you can write it is very true. So spend time thinking about 
your topic so that you know it and then you can write it and insert the citations as you're writing opposed to trying to uh, force the citations in there. If I know what I'm trying to talk about and I'm writing, I can write it out and include the citations based off of where did I get this, what, what article backs up this statement, and I can go back to my annotated bibliography portion for that. So that's the end of this introduction here for that. We will go through each of these topics um, individually uh, in the following lessons.